Okay, you guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, as always, thanks so much for being here. Uh, in spite of the horrendous weather that we have, we really appreciate it. Um, joining Coach Michael and myself tonight, our player guests, both of whom scored their first goal uh, with the mayhem on Saturday in Birmingham, forward Eric Ilitalo and defenseman Cooper Jones. Could we get a brief round of applause for these two guys up here? <laughs> And Coach, actually, that's the first thing I wanted to ask you about uh, because they both arrived in Macon on the same day, um, and it hasn't seemed like it's taken them long, really, for either of them to uh, start helping the team out. Have they both had the effect that you expected them to when uh, they were brought on board from Evansville about uh, two weeks ago? Um, yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, obviously, um, seeing you know both of them play, you know, for Jonesy, for example, you know, he's a smaller guy. Uh, very mobile on the back end, you know, defends well in the sense of less so hit and pin, but more kind of swarming guys and, and being all over him uh, mm -hmm. to separate it from the puck and can join in the offense. And, um, you know, I think that was a perfect example of the goal on Saturday is his ability to kind of get us out of our zone and then, you know, the, the, the instinct and the speed to get into the play um, and, and score. And then, you know, Illy's a, a big body, but he, he moves really well. He's got good hands. And, you know, the more I think he uses his feet first and his hands second, you know, the better off he is. And, you know, that power play goal was, you know, it was perfect. It was a great, you know, shot pass by Herbs and right. um, just had the right touch on it to get it where it needed to go. And, um, you know, they've both been great so far. And I'm um, just looking forward to seeing where they go. Yeah, and it seems like defensively their presence has certainly helped. I'm not sure if it's a coincidence or not, but since they've been here in five games, the Mayhem have had three shutouts. Um, now, we had only had one the entire season up until that point. So, obviously, things have taken a positive turn uh, in terms of uh, the defensive areas of the game. Uh, that's not something that you can really take lightly. Three shutouts in five games, very impressive. Is there anything that you've identified as a reason the team has uh, really stepped up defensively of late? Um, no, I think it's just bearing down. I mean, mm -hmm. it's I don't think it's one singular thing. It's, you know, hockey is a cumulative game, so... You know, maybe it's a little bit more puck possession for us and less so the other team and a little bit more intensity and, and closing people down by the blue and making them dump pucks instead of giving them zone entries and, and uh, hitting and pinning when they do have time in our zone. So, um, you know, and on top of that, both of those games, I mean, even, even the uh, Knoxville game, I thought we had, you know, outstanding goaltending uh, between Stewie and Stilly. They both, mm -hmm. you know, made some, some timely saves, some huge saves for us, but... Um, you know, I certainly think we've been better in terms of denying kind of entry into the blue, um, into our zone, and when it is in our zone, kind of playing faster in the sense of, you know, hitting and pinning, eliminating guys, and then having that quicker support to get possession and, and get out of our zone. So, guys, this uh, next question I have is for both of you. Um, we, on your, on your first road trip with the team, we went up in a, to Knoxville on Friday, to Birmingham on Saturday. Um, both of them pretty important games to win, but uh, I'd say obviously Birmingham being a little bit more important as far as the uh, playoff implications are concerned. Um, however, you both have some pretty strong ties to Knoxville. You both played over 30 games there. So for you, um, which game were you more eager to win this past weekend? Uh, I mean, I, I wanted to win them both for sure, but I for sure wanted to beat Knoxville. And mm -hmm. It sucked to come up short, but... Yeah, hopefully we get them again this year. Good news is we've got another chance coming up soon. How about oh, you, yeah, Cooper? Yeah, we got twice. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think it was just like one at a time for me. Like my mind all week was obviously on the Knoxville game, uh, playing them for the first time since I was there. But like I, I think it was focused on Knoxville all week. But then mm -hmm. once that game was over, switched right back to Birmingham because obviously huge game for us, huge win. Uh, they're close with us in the standings. So yeah, they were definitely both on my mind though all week. Right. Now, Cooper, you're a, a pretty young guy, just 21 years of age. Uh, you came here um, to, the, to the professional level pretty much straight out of uh, junior hockey. Um, that's pretty uncommon for most guys in the SPHL. Uh, most of them don't come to this league straight from, uh, straight from juniors. So um, I guess my question to you is how has that uh, transition been from the uh, major junior to the USHL to the pro, to the pro scene here? Uh, I think it's transferred pretty easily for me. Um... In my eyes, I think junior hockey and pro have, like, a little bit of a better correlation. Like, where I came from, we played a longer schedule mm -hmm. like pro does, and uh, there's a little more puck possession from what I've heard and seen in college hockey. So as far as the style goes, it's been a pretty easy transition, but uh, the size, strength, speed, 
has been a little bit tough, but as the season goes on, I think I've gotten I've gotten used to it pretty well. Yeah. So, Eric, next question I have is for you specifically. Um, now, you've played on a few different teams in the SPHL in the past couple of seasons, yeah. Knoxville, uh, Peoria, Evansville. How is your role here uh, in just five games played under Ryan Michael? Um, how have you liked your role here as opposed to maybe some other places that you've played in? Uh, I've, I've liked it a lot. Um, just seems like a good yeah, he, it seems like he lets you play and like mm-hmm. play, play with confidence. So I've been really enjoying it a lot. Well, seeing that power play goal go in on Saturday uh, was definitely a, an uplifting feeling. The power play has struggled. It was great to see that one, and uh, hopefully we can get some more in. Um, you looked very good, I thought, uh, on Saturday uh, in that uh, power play role that you played. Um, you. All right, guys, the next question I have is for both of you uh, players. Um, with uh, Miracle on Ice Night, or the 40-year anniversary taking place, it's, what, about 10 days ago probably. We didn't have a line change that week because we had a game last Tuesday. But uh, unfortunately, we didn't really do anything for Miracle on Ice um, at uh, a line change previously or at one of our games. So I wanted to ask you, as guys who are from Minnesota and Boston, obviously if you've seen the movie, you'd know uh, how well documented that rivalry is um, (laughs) between hockey players from Minnesota and Boston. Can you uh, validate whether there's any truth to that rivalry in real life? Yeah, I can't stand Coop. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, uh, no, I don't know. I, I don't. I, I think don't, there was uh, more back then. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah I was going to say I think there was back then. They played each other in like the national championship, but right. it's obviously two huge hockey hotbeds in the United States. Like probably two of the biggest. So you got to think there's got to be some competition from guys out of those two areas to begin with, and then if they played each other around that time, probably escalated it a bit. Did you guys have any uh, favorite players from that 1980 team? Uh, Coach, Eric, Cooper, anyone that you kind of uh, looked up to as an example? Yeah, I mean, uh, I, just, I was just going to say uh, Jack O'Callaghan because he played for BU and he was like a defenseman, so I always thought he was cool. He was like a cool, really cool character in the movie too. So for me, yeah, it was probably him course yeah i i like the like neil Broughton. he's a minnesota guy. Uh-huh. i have a, a north star jersey of him like from back in the day I, he's one of my favorite players mm-hmm. yeah i don't think i had a, a favorite player or anything like that um my only i guess cool tie to that was i actually uh, did a post-grad year at the northwood school before going to hobart so um you know i spent a year in lake placid and our home rink was you know, the whole complex, so we played, you know, multiple games in that 1980 arena, which is pretty cool. That's awesome. And that's all surrounded by mountains, isn't it? Yep. Nice. All right, guys, last question I have for you before we let the audience have a turn here. Um, This is the first and only weekend that we're having off all season. We don't have a game on Friday or Saturday, home or away. Do you guys have any plans for this weekend? Um, I was, depending on our schedule, I was maybe going to go check out Maybe do a trip to Savannah or mm-hmm. check out some something cool around here. I, okay. I'm always into touring and checking out. <laughs> well, our, our plan is um, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know uh, we're going to skate um, tomorrow in Columbus, come back, and um, Thursday will be spin workout. Uh, Friday we're going to go to Atlanta, uh, up in Alfreda, and skate, and we're working on possibly mm-hmm. doing a team like Top Golf outing afterwards. Um, and then after that, it's it's kind of up to them for the for the weekend. So, sure. So plan accordingly. Yeah. <laughs> I just saw the Mike Trout Top Golf video. If you guys haven't seen it yet, it's on YouTube. Highly recommended. It. It's pretty Camera insane. Net. Yeah, <laughs> into, into outer space. All right, you guys. Uh, that's all the questions I have. Um, the next part of the show will belong to you. As always, the only thing we ask is that uh, you please ask your questions into this crowd mic here, so that we can get the uh, whole show archived on YouTube later on. First off, I want to congratulate you guys on the shutouts. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Sec- second of all, my eyesight's going bad, but when I walked in, I thought you had surprised us with John Seymour sitting up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'd love to have Seamus back. <laughs> I don't think he's ready to leave the California weather, so all I'm seeing is Instagram posts of him at, on the beach. Do you blame beach. him? No, I don't. Okay. I can't. 
<laughs> Not without it's been here. Yeah. Uh, since you mentioned going to Top Golf, I thought I'd ask, uh, what would the handicap for anyone else on the team need to beat you in a Top Golf challenge, uh, Mike's? I'm not that good in golfing. No, I'm. I'm uh, over the summer. I think you know my best rounds were like over at Healy Point, where you know shooting an 80. I think my lowest was an 81, maybe. So, uh, but usually it's mid <laughs> mid to high 80s. So um, I don't know who would be the best in our group right now. I know last year, you know Trask and Ronsberg and Gensler and stuff. Those guys were all you know single handicap guys or scratch golfers. So. Uh, it wouldn't be too too tough to beat me. I think. <laughs> He's very modest. Right, uh, so I'll ask a, a couple of kind of general housekeeping questions. Um, are there any updates on uh, Danny Caesars or Larry Smith? Um, Smitty is had like a little hip, you know, issue. So um, it was just something where obviously didn't need to go on the IR, but. Uh, needed the rest, so I mean he's feeling better and kind of the day to day it seems to be progressing the way we're we're looking for and you know obviously it's kind of clutch kind of having this weekend off to get him some more rest. Um, you know in, in terms of Caesar, it's it's kind of, we're going to announce something I think you know either tomorrow or, or Thursday, so um, kind of going to have to not really comment too much on it right now, just out uh, of respect to him and, and kind of the situation. So. Then uh, uh, you did get uh, Sean Kasaroski at yeah. the trade deadline, yep. uh, completing a trade that was from previous in the season. Uh, where do you see him fitting in the, the roster? What do you expect from him? Uh, what kind of player can we expect to see on the ice? Um, well, he's a, he's a big body, um, you know, right shot D-man. Um, you know, I think he'll, he'll add a little bit of grit. To our blue line, which you know, I think at times we need, and, and I don't want to say missing, but uh, especially kind of down the stretch where um, I want to say the, the games get chippy, or you know, the calls start to get diminished a bit. But you know, we start getting towards that quote-unquote playoff brand of hockey. So um, you know, I think he'll be a huge asset in that in that respect. Uh, and he moves well, and he's got a, a heavy shot. So um, you know, obviously with all the shutouts and whatnot, it's it's been good on the back end. And and for me, it's you know, I. I'm never, I never want to use the word being satisfied. I'm always trying to, you know, make the team better or find ways to, to get improvement. So, um, you know, I, I think it was a good move. I think it's a, it's a move that helps us. And, you know, I'm excited to have him and, and see what he brings. Uh, last bit of housekeeping there. Uh, Bobby Sokol, uh on in, indefinite team suspension. Is there anything there that you can yep. kind of... Um, he just... Had some, you know, I was actually planning on bringing him down here sooner than I did. Um, not like a, a bunch sooner, but like a week or so. But um, had some some stuff kind of go on back home, and uh, it was something where I, he really didn't have a choice. He kind of had to go back, and um, he's telling me he may play some games um, in the Federal League, but somewhere closer to home, it's something where he needs to be, you know. He's from Pennsylvania, so not – you know, whatever, eight, ten hours away. Um, so it was unfortunate. You know, I thought he was playing well and kind of had proved himself to, to be able to stick here and um, had a little spark, a little bit of a water bug for us. But, um, you know, it's just, again, something where it's out of kind of his control and mine, and you just kind of have to roll with it. Uh, this next one is for Eric. Uh, in looking up kind of just – who the guests are every week. Uh, I usually go through their elite prospects and stuff and notice something kind of interesting of yours that there are, uh, from the end of 13, 14 to the start of 17, 18, there's just nothing listed there. Were you in uh, a league that's kind of obscure or did you take a break from hockey? Uh, what's? Uh, no, I just took a break from hockey. I was just back home working for my dad and played a lot of pickup hockey and like men's league, but yeah, it was just a little break. Is there anything in particular that made you, you know, just kind of have the hunger to come play again, or? Uh, yeah, I mean, I never, I did def definitely, as I had 
I, I grew up, or I can't talk right now, but <laughs> I like miss the game more and more. Like every year, when I quit for the first year, I thought it was it was over, but then I talked myself back into saying like I could give this another run. And yeah, my I was getting sick of my job, <laughs> so that was. I, I can I can understand that too. I I know uh, I missed playing a lot too for a couple of years, so it's it's definitely something that that kind of gnaws at you when you don't do it for a while. So I understand yeah. that. And I'm sure all of us can sympathize with not always being as satisfied with the real world and working. So. Yeah. Uh, my next question is for Cooper. Um, you played in a lot of leagues and a lot of teams over the past couple of years, mm -hmm. and with that, a lot of travel. And I imagine it's really hard to be able to stay on top of your game through all of that. So, what would you say has helped, you know, from going from team to team, league to league, that's really kind of helps keep you, you know, focused on the ice and playing your best? Uh, that's a good question. I I think every time you move spots, it means that there's a fresh start to be had too, and everyone knows how big first impressions are. So I think that that gets me excited every time to be able to go out and show what I can do to a new coach, new teammates, all that type of stuff. And I mean, just remembering why I'm doing this, why I love the game is because, you know, a lot of people wish they could be playing a pro professional sport and or, you know, junior last year. And, you know, I, I just think that, you know, every time you get like, oh, I got to travel here, I got to travel there. You got to remember why you're doing it. And we all love the game so much and that's why we do it. So. Yeah, I think that's it. So, both of y'all, where do you see yourself after hockey? Uh, I think I, I think I'd like to stay in hockey. For me, hopefully, it's a long way down the road. I, I hope I have a, a lot of years left playing, but. I, I think I could see myself staying in hockey. My my dad uh, has always been in hockey. He's been a coach for many years and scout and stuff. So I'd love to get into it. I don't know how or what way that's going to be, but I think I'd love to stay in it somehow, whether it's, you know, trying to be a coach or a scout or, you know, doing analytics like, like you or anything like that. I'd love to do something like that. So, you know. Yeah, I, I also want to be like a, a coach someday, like, high school or anything, stay in the game and, I don't know, maybe sales or something to uh, give the sales world a shot, I guess. <laughs> what was it you were doing with your dad before? Uh, like lawn and landscaping and shovel, plowing snow. Those days behind you for good? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I lied when I said last piece of housekeeping. Uh, I was looking at the ECHL standings and saw that it's pretty unlikely that Wheeling is going to make the playoffs and wanted to know if you've been in contact with Minerva at all about maybe coming back. Um, I mean, I talked to Minerva a good bit, and it's never about that. Um, you know, he's always kind of checking in on, on me and in the group, and, um, you know, he's been forwarding me players that he knows um, that are, are kind of graduating from school and stuff like that right now. So, um you know, it's, it's again, it's a situation, same with, you know, McHugh and same with Soper that, um, you know, you obviously, you, you want them back in the sense that, you know, they make your group better. Um, you know, you know, you get that much deeper and that much better wherever they are. Um, but at the same time, you know, I, I recognize what, what this league is. And obviously it's, it's to win games, but it's about getting players better and moving to the next level. So it's, you know, I'm not a guy that's going to be, Hounding, you know, Greenville or, or Wheeling or, or Rapid City, trying to get these guys back because you know I don't want it. You know, that's their dream is is to move up and have success at that level, and that's something you know I never want to take away. You know, granted, if it works out, I'd love to have Minerva back, but um, you know, I know he's happy up there and he's doing pretty well. So, um, it just is what it is. <clears throat> You actually mentioned something that kind of folds into my next question pretty well. Is uh, how important is it to have guys on the roster try and help recruit guys that you know they knew from college or that they knew from juniors, and having them kind of be part of the the cell of coming to make and playing for you? Well, I think it's everything. I mean, I, I think it's at every level. I think you know, you know these guys can attest to it too. Whether it's juniors or college, it's um, you know, 
you see everybody, you know, whether it's in person, watching them live, you know, scouting them, watching them play, um, or, you know, in the, in the pro game for us, it's, you know, it's harder to do to get film. Um, so it's a little bit more, you know, elite prospects and talking to people, but to have kind of that personal connection of, you know, being a former teammate um, with some of these guys, that's kind of, that means the world because it, you know, I'm, what's coming out of my mouth is kind of my perspective on everything in terms of the hockey and the situation down here. So to be able to have, you know, their perspective on it and uh, not to say that these kids don't trust me, but they hear the same stuff, you know what I mean, from everybody. So, um, you know, that's huge and it's only me. So it's um, guys fall through the cracks for sure. Um, and, and having everybody, you know, reach out to let me know, hey, this guy's looking or you should talk to him or whatnot. It just it, it makes my job a lot easier. So. All right. Uh, last one for me. Uh, since the last line change, uh, we had a pretty interesting scenario in the NHL with the emergency backup goalie. That was... See your shirt? <laughs> I didn't even. Yeah, see. yeah that's. <laughs> but uh, and a lot of discussion, kind of about you know fantasy e bug scenarios, because that's pretty much what it was. So I have a, a fantasy e bug question for you, because one of the things that was interesting about it was that he was the Toronto guy that had to play against Toronto. So my ridiculous e bug question for you is, uh, if the mayhem uh, emergency backup Evan Watts uh, had to go into a game. Playoffs on the line, and you get a shootout in overtime. But the trick is, your shooter has to be someone from the Mayhem front office to score. Who do you pick? <laughs> what a question. That was wow. the most loaded question. <laughs> <laughs> what a question. Wow. I don't know, man. That's tough. I don't. <laughs> Playoffs on the line, remember. <laughs> well, I, I'm trying to think because I've only. I haven't seen you skate. I've seen Tyler skate once, and it was not pretty. <laughs> um, yeah, oh God. And I don't think Zach, Zach ever skated. I don't think so. I don't think. No. He goes on I don't the think, ice in his big country love, boots. Yeah, I love Blair, but I don't think he's the guy either. So I don't. I think I'd give it to Alex, to be honest with you. Just being from Chicago, he actually owns his own pair of skates, so I think that's the it's best resume we have going up there. <laughs> <laughs> No. Nope. Uh, no. No. That would have obviously been him. That he would have picked the himself. Case. <laughs> that wouldn't have been as funny, I think. Uh, <laughs> a little bit. Not, not at any kind of uh, high level. But I appreciate the vote of confidence. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah. All right, you guys. Uh, if there's uh, no other questions, we're going to move on. Um, as always, we're going to do a trivia question at the end. Uh, I want to ask Coach uh, one more thing here before we get to that. Um, Coach, we mentioned a little bit earlier we're about to go on a 10-day break without a game. Um, well, we're already in the middle stages of it, but uh, still a nice little break uh, in the later stages of the season, which I think is especially rare. Now, I know that we won't have an opportunity to uh, add points, obviously, this weekend coming up, but do you still think that this uh, kind of rest from the game um, is going to be beneficial for the team in the long run? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, it's it's a long year, and... Um, you know, with the roster size we have, guys are, are bound to get nicked up and obviously playing through some, some injuries or just some, some minor things. So um, I think we're approaching this week the right way in the sense that, you know, we had, you know, two days of rest. Um, we're going to skate two days, you know, have a little team bonding activity, um, get spin and workouts in, and, you know, and then to kind of have the weekend off in a sense. So, um, you know, especially with guys like Smitty and, and you know, Z mm -hmm. that's on the IR, just that extra time to kind of um, to obviously get healed up a bit more. And then just for everybody in general, I think the mental state, it's a bit of a grind, as these guys I'm sure can tell you. And, you know, I can tell you from my years of playing in this league, it's, it's definitely a grind. And, you know, with 10 games left, this is kind of our final hurrah, our final push to, to get this done. So I think right. we're approaching it the right way. And I think, you know, if we have the right mindset for our practices this week, um, I think this could be super healthy for us, uh, not only physically, but, but mentally as well. Well, hopefully we see a, a well-rested and rejuvenated Mayhem team. Again, our next uh, game, folks, is going to be Tuesday next week, so one week from today. It's our fan appreciation night. Uh, I think we mentioned it on Facebook earlier, but the first 50 people through the door will get uh, free one of these bad boys. We've got 50 of them left, 
and we're handing them out. Uh, tickets are also $10 admission at the box office, and we're looking forward to having you guys there. Um, okay, as always, last question is a trivia question. Whoever can answer it correctly will win an autographed puck from Cooper Jones and Eric Elitalo, and the question is this. The 1980 U.S. Olympic team that won gold in Lake Placid, who was the head coach of that Miracle on Ice team? Kurt Russell. <laughs> That's very close. If I could give you half a puck, I would. <laughs> what was the name? What was the name yeah, of the person yeah, that yeah, Kurt Russell phones. portrayed? <laughs> Anyone? Oh. Next question. <laughs> what was the name of the 1980 U.S. Olympic team head coach that won gold at Lake Placid? The Miracle on Ice team. There you go. Hey. <laughs> Congratulations. <Hey. laughs> oh boy. That's the first time you've won one of these, right? Yeah. Good job. No. Sorry, Debbie, I don't have half a puck to give you. Sorry. That's right. Well, uh, two weeks from now. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, thanks so much for coming out. Really appreciate it. Again, there won't be a uh, line change show next week. We've got a game. We're hosting Knoxville Fan Appreciation Night. We hope to see you guys there. Uh, in the meantime, we'll be here again two weeks from today. Hope to see you back here again as well. Again, thanks so much for coming out. Hope you've enjoyed your meals.